Hi. Welcome to the Royal College of Music. Thank you, you're Paul. Yeah, I'm Paul, and you must be Amelia. I am. <laughs> Good, well, if you'd like to come this Professor way, Paul you. Banks is an expert on the history of the college. What an incredible room. Extraordinary, isn't it? As you can see, we've got a lot of old musical instruments here, and I've got some documents that I think might interest you. Fantastic. This building was opened in 1894. And we can get a sense of how big an event it was from this photograph. You can see the street is decorated with bunting. Bedecked? It's so beautiful. It's almost like a theatrical set, it is. actually, isn't it? The Royal College of Music was one of several institutions established in Kensington by the royal family to ensure the cultural preeminence of the British Empire. These included the Natural History Museum and the Royal Albert Hall. Edward, the Prince of Wales, personally oversaw the fundraising drive for the new Royal College of Music building. What we've got here is a printed schedule of what happened when this building was officially opened by the Prince of Wales. And as you can see, Samson Fox played quite an important role. Address to be read by Mr Samson Fox to HRH, the Prince of Wales. The cost of this handsome and commodious edifice has been defrayed by our colleague, Mr. Sampson Fox, whom we have deputed to read this address. So this implies that there was only one donor. That's absolutely right. The whole of the cost of the new building was met by Sampson Fox. My goodness. Do you know how much it was? We do, uh, because of these two objects. Uh, these are the cheques written by Samson Fox for £45,000, which is, in today's terms, close to two and a half million. But what's interesting is that it also gives a clue to his background, that he came from Leeds. And would Samson have personally given these cheques yes. to the Prince Yes, Wales? we know that he did. Isn't that amazing, to think that he was holding this? Is there a thank you letter? <laughs> <laughs> well, <In reply. laughs> we do also have the uh, um, speech that the prince... Oh, do you? Uh, it's on the next page. <laughs> it is with great pleasure that on behalf of Her Majesty, I am to thank you, Mr Fox, for the discerning munificence to which we owe this noble and fitting home for the honour and advancement of the study of music. Why does this make me so happy? It makes me very, very... <laughs> it's so wonderful. Here we have a couple of photographs from the time, and here is the prince standing, and there in the middle is somebody who I think could be Samson Fox reading the address. Well, from the picture I saw the other day, he was bearded, and you can just, just, just see. That's so exciting. My uh, great aunts said that there was a bust of Samson somewhere. Oh, well, I might be able to help you with that. If you'd like to follow me, we'll go back to the entrance hall. I don't want to leave those checks behind. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Here he is. That's amazing seeing him like this and his spectacular beard. It is pretty impressive, I think. <laughs> um, I think he never trimmed it because he didn't want to lose his strength. He's certainly an impressive figure, I must say. Really is. But I think there is something slightly odd here because looking at what Samson had done, he'd given all this money, yes. he'd worked closely with the Prince of Wales, and yet he never got a knighthood. Why is that? That is something of a mystery. One certainly would have expected Samson Fox to have been knighted. Well, it is astounding that my great-great-grandfather is the sole donor of the Royal College of Music. Imagine what the value of that building now is. Um, I mean, I'm totally... I, I am gobsmacked that anyone in our family <laughs> had made that sort of money. And I'd love to know more about Sampson's background. So that's the next step of the journey.